something that I've found personally as an artist, I'm just going to say it, I'm going to put it out there, is that it's not always easy to make money from your art. It's not hard. It's not always hard either. I'm not saying either way, but something about making your art your sole income, especially in the early days, it puts a lot of pressure on the work. It puts a lot of pressure on you as an artist and art doesn't always respond well to pressure. So what I'm trying to say is it's really nice to give my art a break from having to be the thing that earns the money, you know? <laughs> and welcome to the Apple Shed. My name is Erin and this is my creative studio. So the last couple of weeks have been really fun and exciting and busy. I have been making a concerted effort to get myself and my art out into the world. Because you see, I am naturally quite an introvert and could very happily lock myself away in my studio and never come out. And indeed, I have done that for years. But I've sort of come to a point in my life and in my work where I realized that I need to get out there, that I can't just hide behind a computer all the time. And it is working, it is legitimately working behind a computer, of course, but at the same time, you can hide behind a screen. And if you're an artist, a maker, a creator, you really do need to get out there in your community. And having moved to a new place, being new to Tasmania, being new to this, this region and this creative community, I think, I think it's really important for me and my work that I, that I get out there. And also it is a beautiful community out here. It is absolutely full of amazing artists who are supportive and kind and generous. And it's, it's just vibrant. It's a vibrant community. Why wouldn't you want to be out of it? You know? So the time has come for me to make, to take those steps and, and, and get out there, which is what I've been doing the last couple of weeks, which is why I've been quite, quite busy and unable to get a video up sooner. But let me tell you more. So I've taken a few steps. The first one being starting a real life in-person market stall which is so exciting for me. It's, I, I did have a market stall once before, but that was about seven years ago. And would you believe I was making and selling hand bound, handmade books. So I did that for a, a very, very short time. And, um, and I haven't done it since. So this, it does feel quite new to do it now. And I, there was so much to prepare for the market stall. Like you have to, you have to create a beautiful stall. There has to be, with all the, the products that I have, art prints, stationery, homewares, you need to find a way to display it all at different levels and heights and in, in, in different ways. And it, you have to do, like you ha I have had to build certain things like, um, let me show you. Things like this card stand for my greeting cards. Uh, I did not build this. Steve, my darling Steve, built this for me to my specifications. <laughs> but things like this, you know, that you need. And so it was a lot of prep to get it all ready. But in the end, the market store went really well. Oh, I had such a good time. The, the ability to be able to talk to my customers. You know, I've been selling online on a website for years and that's great, that's wonderful. But to have the opportunity 
to be in person, to have that in-person exchange and talk to my customers and just talk to the people at the markets and hang out with the other stall holders and have that um, real-time interaction and have um, immediate feedback on your product. Priceless. I enjoyed it so much. And so I really want to make it, I'm going to make it a regular thing. My market was held at a place called the Kingston Beach Handmade Markets in Kingston, in Tassie. And I, I'd really like that to be a regular thing. Um, it was such a joy. It was so much fun and it went very well and I sold a lot and I made money. So tick, 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 that was fabulous. Most of all though, it was just really fun. Oh, there's a fly in here. So that was the first thing that I got up to. Secondly, I got a job. I haven't had an, I've been running my own business for years. I haven't worked for somebody else since I had kids, really. Like I've done a week's work here or there or a day's work and done, you know, here or there, but not had a consistent job for somebody else for years. This floristry job just kind of landed in my lap. Um, the owner of the florist needed help um, through a friend of a friend it sort of came to me and said do you want this job and I thought about it and I thought well I love flowers love flowers this could be fun I've never done this before why not let's just do it I'll just do it and see how it goes so I it's it's a part-time job it's literally a couple of mornings a week I took the job I did a trial did a couple of weeks and I just love it. I absolutely love it. It gets me out of the house. It gets me out of the studio. Again, I get to be around people and I'm, I love my boss. I'm learning floristry skills, which is fantastic. New skills that I hadn't had before and extra perk. I get to bring home flowers that are past their date that you can't sell, which is what these are, which is still gorgeous and beautiful and I can still paint them um it's just a win-win I'm so excited about it I love it I love working in the florist something that I've found personally as an artist I'm just gonna say it I'm gonna put it out there is that it's not always easy to make money from your art it's not hard it's not always hard either I'm not saying either way but something about making your art your soul income especially in the early days it puts a lot of pressure on the work it puts a lot of pressure on you as an artist and art doesn't always respond well to pressure so what I'm trying to say is it's really nice to give my art a break from having to be the thing that earns the money you know it having this part-time job is working for me on a lot of levels getting out of my studio uh, having uh, learning new skills like being around flowers and also having an extra stream of income that isn't solely coming from my business if you know what i mean it really it's really nice it's really nice it gives me a break and it feels good and i like that i don't think we should feel ashamed as artists that we require lots of different income streams i mean to me it's something that makes total sense you must have lots of different income streams. You can never place all your eggs in, in one basket. And I think that I will make, I'll talk more about this in a separate video is about all the different income streams of being an artist that I've tried and that work for me and how I've grown in, in different ways and in different paths with my income streams. But for now, I just, I would like to share with you that I, I, I'm feeling really positive about having a part-time job. I think it's great. It's great for me. And the third thing that I have done to get my work out there is to reach out to a beautiful shop in central Hobart called the Tassie Makers Market. It is gorgeous. So what they do is they exclusively stock uh, art and products made by Tasmanian makers, which I am now. And it is just gorgeous. The quality of the products in there are just beautiful and original and bright and got the shop is so pretty. So I reached out to them. Well, they did do a post saying they were looking for people over like new, new makers. And so I reached out to them and applied 
and thankfully they loved my work and said yes we'd love to have you in the shop so we did so I did that and that took a little bit of organizing and planning and figuring out like I've never done that before I have done wholesale before but I you know it's a new shop and it's a new place so I wasn't entirely sure what I should put in there uh, and it's still like it's a process of figuring it out so I've, I've given them some art prints and I've given them some cushions and homewares and a few things have sold and I'll go in there and I'll chat to them and figure out what's working and perhaps what I can restock or something new I could put in. I don't know, it's a process, but I love it. It's exciting. It's right in the center of town. So people will come, they will see my work. That's, that feels really good to me. That feels really good. I'm, you know, it's not just about the money. It's about getting my name out there and getting my work out there. So these are the main things I've done over the last couple of weeks to get my name out there and get things in motion and become part of the community. And it's it's been wonderful. I'm meeting so many makers in person and online, other artists like myself, and it's just fantastic. I love it. I'm really, really into it. I'm really happy about where things are going. <music> updating my website. I've put a lot of time and work into that over the last couple of weeks. I really wanted to, I had so much artwork that I needed to add in there. I, I can be a bit, I get very behind in adding art prints and things to my online shop. So it builds up, but I also just wanted to change the whole look and feel of it. So it felt more like a shop and it was easy for people to find what they want. I needed to update the categories and the menus so people could come in and they could say, okay, I'm looking for animals or I'm looking for the landscapes or I'm looking for bookmarks or I'm looking for, you know, whatever. So I've done that, it took a ton of work, but I'm really happy with it. I'd love it if you would hop on there and have a look and give me some feedback and let me know what you think of how it's working. That would be amazing. Um, ErinDuncanCreative.com. That's where you have to go. And so that's taken a lot of work, but well worth it. I'm feeling really, really good about it. I've released a lot of new products and art prints on there. One of which is bookmarks. Now these were a little bit of a labor of love. They did take a while because I hand painted all the, all the designs and and then obviously had to design them into bookmarks and then get the bookmarks made and then find the perfect matching velvet ribbons for each design. But I'm so happy with how they turned out. I couldn't be happier. There are four different designs to choose from, which I adore. Each bookmark has a lovely quote on the back. The whale bookmark has a quote from my one of my favorite poets of all time, the beautiful Mary Oliver. And the quote is, leave some room in your heart for the unimaginable. I just love that one so much. And it's so true and it's so important. And it has this perfect, sumptuous, French turquoise velvet ribbon on it that is just perfect for the color. I can't tell you how 
satisfied and amazing it is when you find the exact perfect shade of velvet ribbon to match your bookmark. This one here is the Lost in the Magic bookmark with the quote, you are never alone when lost in the magic of a book. And it's got this gorgeous kind of little women style to it. I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. And here we have the Moth bookmark, which is based on the more Victorian illustration style with a quote on the back from Emily Dickinson. The poet lights the light and fades away but the light goes on and on. Isn't that just so beautiful and so true? And lastly, my favorite bookmark, and actually everybody's favorite bookmark, it just sells really well, is the Midnight Cat, who sits on his stack of books with the quote on the back, just one more chapter, which is what my kids say to me every night when I tell them it is time to turn off the light and go to bed. Now, with all that said, I have been unable to really sit down and get into painting for the last couple of weeks. It just hasn't happened. There has been too much on and too much to do, which is all, they've all been legitimate parts of business. They've all been things that I had to do, but I need to paint. And I don't know about you guys, but if I haven't painted, if I haven't painted every day, I start to get a like a little bit tetchy, like a little bit, ooh, I don't know if I can do it anymore. I don't know if I can paint. So if I haven't painted for like a week or two, like properly, then I start to get really worried. It's gone, that's it. I don't think I can paint again. I don't think I can do it anymore. It's just what goes on. It's just what goes on in my head. So I am also the kind of person that if I know that I need to get back into the swing of painting and I really, I want to do a series. I want to get in there. I want to get a lot done and get right into the flow of creation. And I'm going to get into it for a good few weeks. Then I need to rearrange my studio. It's just, you know, I've got to, I've got to rearrange my desk. I've got to change everything up. It's got to be fresh. So we had to do that. I had to do that too. Um, which I did yesterday in order to prepare for some new painting sesh. Let me take you on a little, just a, a mini tour so you can see what I've set up and I think you'll like it. So first of all, there's the new desk set up, which I'm really into. I've moved my inks over here. I've got these paintings up here to inspire me and flowers and yeah, so that's feeling pretty good. Then I've got this set up here which isn't the best because it's kind of on a box. So it's a little wobbly. I'm going to have to find a way to make that a bit uh, stronger, more stable. So I can sit here and paint with canvas. I've created, I'm going to show you now. I've created a gallery wall over here to inspire me a bit. This setup comes from my market stall setup. Okay. So what I've got here on this side of the room is a plastic sheet protecting the wall and then a wall mounted canvas. So I can literally paint here, nice and big, paint here and paint there all at the same time and just move around from thing to thing. I mean, I don't know if that's how it's actually gonna work out, but I am so excited about it. This is my dream studio. I mean, in a small version. It's like, it's turned into this gorgeous little nook in the corner of the apple shed and I'm so excited about it. I have been wanting a setup like this forever. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm beyond thrilled to finally have this up so I can get into painting. Um, I have got so much half finished work and products that are half like half illustrated, half designed. So I'm really going to get stuck into those over the next couple of weeks and get things made. Follow me along on this journey. Follow me here. Follow me on the gram. Follow me on Facebook. I don't know. And um, yeah, let's do this. I would love to share it with you. It's gonna be a good juicy time of painting coming up uh, because the last couple of weeks have been so busy with other things. I'm really looking forward to getting into this lovely space that I've created in the Apple Shed. So that's about it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you would subscribe and I will speak to you soon. Bye.